Hello everybody and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are going to be painting this really beautiful misty lake, morning misty lake scene. Um, so the first thing you want to do is cover your entire piece of paper with a layer of water using a mop brush. And the mop brush that I use is by Windsor & Newton and I've linked it in the description as I always do. And I'm just uh, wetting the other side of my piece of paper first before wetting the front side because that helps it um, or prevents it from buckling and keeps it nice and flat when we're painting on it. So that is what I'm doing first. And you wanna make sure you have a really nice even layer of water on your entire piece of paper. And we are painting this particular painting vertically like so. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to do is create a wash in the background. And this is going to be like a grayish blue wash. And as usual, I don't have any clean room on my palette to mix any colors. I've just zoomed out so you can see what colors I'm mixing. And you can also see how dirty my palette is. So I'm taking a little bit of gray, um, a little bit of blue, and I might just take some pink in later. But you want it to be very subtle. So that it's obvious that there is a haze, but it's not too, too dark. I want to add a little bit of pink in there. Subtle, subtle pink tones. I mean, you can barely see it. And when it dries, it'll be even lighter. So now that I say that, I am going to make it a tad bit darker. But we want to paint in like a almost tree-like shapes, kind of in the top half slash top third of our painting. And they don't have to be pine trees. I know I tend to paint pine trees. They can just be, you know, kind of bushy looking trees. And they're all going to be connected together at the bottom and they're gonna fade out. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. You can just kind of paint the tops of them first. And they're going to span across the entire length of the paper, width-wise, of course. So, just painting those guys in. This is a size 1 by Windsor & Newton that I'm using right now. It's become one of my favorite brushes recently. And you can also make your trees, you know, slightly different heights to add variety to the painting. But we, we do want to apply this while your background is still wet because it creates the illusion that these trees are um, in like early morning haze or mist. And they're either in the distance or they're covered by that haze. And you want them to be very, very soft. Like, I don't like how dotted mine look. These are okay on this side, but these are way too dotty. So I'm just trying to soften that by blending those together while maintaining the shapes, of course. And I've just taken uh, a bigger brush here and I'm going to fade. I'm going to kind of connect them all at the bottom and just fade them out. to make it look like they're truly lost in a haze. Just going back in and making them a little bit bushier because I find that they faded a little bit too much into the background and we do still want them to look like trees. We want to, <laughs> not some blobs in the distance. So I'm very gently adding a little bit more bush to them 
and some more defined branch tips. And I'm trying to be careful not to make them look uh, like dotted like I did that first round and that's why I faded them out a little bit. See, now they look a little bit more defined and a little bit more like tree points. So see how now they look a lot more like trees uh, and less like blobs and they still fade out like they still start to fade into blobs because cotton paper just works so well at blending things together. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that pink reflection onto the water here. And I know that that was a lot of work for this very <laughs> minimal background, but we're going to completely let this dry before we move on to the next step. So I just put a hair dryer to this guy to dry it a tiny little bit. Um, it's mostly dry, but while it is still just a smidge wet, I'm going to add uh, like a... Oh no, that's mostly dry. <laughs> oh well. Um, I'm just adding a tree here and I still wanted it to be a tad bit wet because I wanted this tree to be extremely subtle, but um, we can just work with it. Like I wanted it to come from within the pines, whereas now it kind of looks like it's floating, but we can work with that. So I'm just basically taking off all my pigment and extending the base of the tree into the haze of the pines or the other trees that we painted. And hopefully as that dries, it'll fade and become as unnoticeable as possible. So taking, again, we're taking extremely, extremely watered down blue here. It's almost gray and non, um, you, like you won't be able to see it on a white piece of paper as clearly. And what we want to do now is just create the little ripples in the water. So in fact, mine is even a little bit too light. It's not even showing. Oh, okay, see here, my piece of paper is still a little bit wet. Because I can see that the, the ripples are fading as I'm painting them on. Which isn't a bad thing. I'm just going to paint a few. And then when it completely dries, I'll paint more. So now we're going to paint the details that really make this painting uh, complete because it, we're going to paint the foreground basically. So we can start painting. I'm going to start with my reeds since those are kind of the, the center, center of attention. Um, so they're just going to come from the bottom. And I'm going to have one that extends into our trees here. There we go. And I'm going to have another one that's a little bit shorter. Okay. 
And you don't have to follow the exact pattern that I'm following, or that I'm painting. You can paint as many of these guys as you'd like. You can have them coming from the other side. Um, totally up to you. Yeah, I like that, how that is. I'm going to obviously add some shading to these guys to make them a little more realistic. So I'm just grabbing some black watercolor right now adding it to my brown and I'm going to apply it just on the left side. And while that is doing its thing, I'm going to grab my green watercolor. This is where we can start kind of getting fun with it and uh, just painting on a bunch of really long blades of grass. And these blades of grass can be whatever thickness that you want them to be. They can be different shades of green. Totally up to you. I'm going to make some of mine a little bit shorter. The key thing though is having enough paint on your paintbrush so that it doesn't dry out mid stroke because then um, it won't look as natural and it won't paint on as nicely either. And I'm going to have my blade of grass. It's going to see how that one, I don't know if you can see that if I go up a little bit closer, how it, I kind of ran out of pigment there out of moisture and it created this dragging effect. It wasn't really smooth and natural. Add some intensity to my blades of grass so that they're not all one color. Okay, fantastic. So when you're happy with the amount of blades of grass that you have, um, we're basically finished. Um, if you would like, you can also add some very light flying birds in the distance if you want to add a little bit more detail in the corner here. Otherwise, we're all finished with this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one.